I like everything will come out of the sea because it's really great because I like conch. Conch? It's the real behemoth thing. Oh yeah, you know us behemoths, we raise on conch. Mm. My favorite is the conch. Conch fritters, conch chowder, conch soup, the crack conch, scotch. All the conch is good. For me, it's like it's straight up. The scotch. Cool. Yeah. Conk and rice, conk and grits. Conk salad is my favorite. Conk and fries. And there's probably more ways that you can do conk too. Bahamians and tourists, we all love conch. We even export it to foreign countries. But can it last at this rate? As a little boy, only had to go about four or five miles. Now we have to go out a bit further, somewhere around 30 to um, 40, 45 miles offshore down on the banks. Before time, like where, where we used to go, you could have just like the conch used to be pile up. You know where you could just go pick up, pick up, but right now you have to dive wrong a bit. They ain't as much as they used to be. They were there and now they're not. I'm, obviously we're, 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 we're kind of overfishing it. We're taking them away from the sea faster than they're reproducing, I guess. Our country without conch? No way. Can't be. Gotta have conch. We gotta do something now. Lucky for us, we got community conch. <laughs> Community Conk is a small organization of scientists and volunteers that have been collecting the scientific data and information necessary to manage a sustainable conk fishery in the Bahamas. The results so far confirm that conk are in trouble. Conk begin life hatching from eggs as larvae. This egg sac may contain hundreds of thousands of eggs. After they hatch, they drift in the ocean. Conk larvae drift in the currents for about one month until they find a suitable habitat to settle down and begin building a shell. Of course, they start small, but slowly they build up their home. A conch will keep the same shell for its entire life. And after three years, the lips begin to flare. Now, this flare lip starts very thin, but every year the conch adds thickness. Conch may not reproduce until they're five years old. Flare lip is also when we can take them. Our biggest problem out there we've witnessed here is uh, harvesting the, the juvenile conk. You have to wait until they get a big age to get their conk over them. So that they can grow, so they can have children. You take a juvenile conk. Never had a chance to reproduce. When they see the baby conks and stuff like that, leave it. To make their contribution to, to, to nature, so to speak. And if you keep picking them up from small, then we won't have none, because ain't none would be there to reproduce. Don't have a chance. 
a mature account, you know, they've had a chance to um, reproduce and, you know, you're going to kill this conch, but it, it has off offsprings. Because we need to be able to eat too, you understand? Apparently the law says you can't take a conch without a flared lip. Even though these two conchs are about the same size, one is much younger. Now there's a new saying right now in the Bahamas that the big conch without a flared lip is a different species. So you could take them and eat them. But let me tell you, that ain't true. Look at all our young kids. They come in different shapes and sizes. Cones are the same way. If it ain't got a lip, it ain't legal, period. But studies by Community Conk shows that this law is probably not enough to protect the conk. What we found was very low densities and even some places that were completely fished out. These results ain't good, but it took a lot of effort for Community Conk to make sure its research was solid and it had lots of help. One of the things that really um, inspires me is to, to find um, Bahamian students here in the Bahamas that would really like to see a change in the way things are going. I was approached by Catherine Booker saying, hey, we're doing this project. Basically, we are assessing conch populations throughout the Bahamas. And you're a fun person, and you love to do volunteer work, so why don't you come try it out, come help us out for you. And I said, all right, cool. I didn't really have a concept of what we were doing. I thought I was going to get in the water, swim around for a little bit, come with the conch that I see, and then get back in the boat. Actually, I was being dragged. <laughs> for, say, a quarter of a mile, maybe eight times a day. And I'd be at the end of the ski rope with a mask and snorkel and a counter, and I would count all of the conch that I see. There'd always be someone at the stern of the boat looking at me, watching out for my hand signals and my numbers. We try to cover as much ground as we possibly can when we're out in the boat doing these surveys. What we're looking for when we go to an area is conch density. Conch density is the number of conch in an area. High densities are necessary for reproduction to take place and sustain a population over time. If those densities get too low, then you lose reproduction and that's not good. If an area has low density, it's harder for conch to find each other. They move slow. They can't cover a lot of ground. And if they can't find each other, they can't reproduce. One way to increase conch density is have protected areas. Turns out, that might not be enough. There were two surveys done at the Exuma Keys Land and Sea Park, one in the 1990s and the second one 20 years later. The conch density was good but the population was aging. The current is carrying larvae out into other areas, but there aren't new larvae coming back in. So it's just the same old conch sitting there year after year after year. Now the best way to do it is to have a network of parks based on the currents. That way the parks would keep feeding each other fresh conch larvae and they would also restock the fishing grounds for the rest of us. There is one more piece of bad news. What we've just found out with our research is that actually the conch not only has to have a flared lip, but it also needs to have a little thickness to its lip. Lip thickness is an indication of maturity. So even with the current law, making it illegal to take a conch without a flared lip, conch can still be harvested in the Bahamas before they've had a chance to reproduce because they need to have this thick lip. If it has 15 millimeters of thickness to the lip, that means it's definitely had a chance to reproduce. That's clearly, you wouldn't even measure that one. Researchers can see that the average age of harvested conch is getting younger and younger. You never really think too much about it, you know? You would see a big conch min and be like, oh, I guess 
people bring in a lot of conch these days. Oh, look at that, it smells awful. However, you don't really think, wow, if that's a lot of conch in this one spot, and there's several spots on the island, we must be fishing a lot of conch. We're fishing too much conch, and we know it, because the density is falling. And fishermen and everybody are getting younger and younger conch. Our parks aren't even protecting them, and neither's the law. What can we do? If I knew, I, have, I would say I have no idea um, how, they, how the conch spawn, how stuff like that. So I don't, I couldn't tell you. But what you think they should do? Well, we got to do something, because once we lose the conchs, they won't come back. In the 1980s, the Florida Keys conch population collapsed. Officials closed all the conch fishing and tried to reintroduce the species, but it still hasn't worked to this day. The Conch Republic ain't got no conch. Throughout the Caribbean, conch is disappearing. Belize, you know, they were the biggest export of conch in the world, but then they had to start a close season and give fishermen a quota to help the conch. Fishermen in Belize have to harvest the right size conch, and they're not allowed to use compressed air to dye for the conch. So do you think people care that there's other countries in the Caribbean that have already overfished their conch? Definitely, but most people don't even know that. Mm -hmm. I say it's a matter of education. Most people don't really know. Right now, I think the most important thing is for people to educate themselves about the situation. There isn't a single exhumian or bohemian that wants to see conchs extinct. But as long as people don't understand, or as long as people still believe we cannot overfish conchs, then this whole topic of conch preservation is worthless. When you speak of conservation, education is you know, the key to everything. And that's the only way that we're going to get it across to the masses, is to educate them. Really got some great feedback from from fishermen that were that were already concerned about the situation. We got a lot of Dominican, a lot of poachers. I believe we gotta have some type of regulation. So we have rules and regulations on the books here. It's enforcement. Some people even believe there should be season on, on conch. And if you put a season on, they'll be harvested out of season. The exploitation of it, I don't agree for it. I think that it should stay in the Bahamian water. Areas, you know, uh, no take zones. The biggest solution is uh, Try to stop the guys from chopping the conch on the conch bed, number one. And diving conch with compressors, number two. You know. The emphasis should be on, look, Bahamians, people, we can't overfish conch. We will overfish conch. We gotta do something. My little daughter coming up, you know, she wanna be around to say, well, look, yeah, hey, my daddy used to do this, and now she doing something like that. This is the man who made conch. He's my daddy's big D. A we have to preserve and protect what we have. When someone bring me some conch and I check it first and it ain't right, ain't nothing happening. You can take them back. I don't want that. No juvenile up in here, okay? And they know how I go with that. You want this to be for you until way down the road. So if you ain't complying with what's going on today, then you won't have nothing to bring to me. I'll call you up and I say, uh, you have any conch? You say no, because you know why? In and there. So we have to, you know, protect what we have right now today. It's actually a lot easier to address the problem earlier on, manage the conch fishery for sustainable harvest before you get to that point where the collapse has occurred and it may be impossible to get those populations back. It's like the mindset, we got to do something. We could crack down on poaching, have a closed season, stop exporting, Increase the number of protected areas, ban the use of compressors, educate the public, and as someone who loves to eat conch, you can make sure you're eating the legal size conch. What do you think?